I have painted an icon of the Reverend Leonard Noel Kentish, an Australian Methodist minister who served Indigenous communities in the north of Australia during World War II. He was captured, tortured and killed. His murderers were tried and convicted of war crimes. Len is hailed as a martyr by the Uniting Church in Australia. I've made this video as a tribute to Len Kentish, but also to demonstrate one of the traps in tracing an image from a photo to a panel. Let's see what happened. The music you can hear in the background is Foray's Requiem. Now, what I have done, as I did last time, was to put a, a red ochre on the back of uh, a, a copy of this photo, and then stuck it onto the panel, and then with a ballpoint pen traced around and as I have uh, discovered uh, recently, rather than then going over those lines with uh, dark paint like uh, Mars Black or Burnt Umber, I have simply uh, wetted my brush with uh, egg tempera and gone over it. And so that's why you can actually see where the, the egg tempera is. And what it does is it uh, uh, seals the red ochre onto the panel. But even though the of course the, the, the photo is true, what comes out is some anomalies. And if I obey the lines that I have put in this face, I'm going to come up with a painting of a face that is, to use a technical term, wonky. Why? Well, look at the eyes. Look how the, the axis of that eye is slightly different from the axis of that eye. Not only that, but the axis of the eyes is different from the axis of the mouth. And that's just going to be weird. That means as I start to put in the shading for this face, I need to pay attention to what I know about the dimensions of a face. So, for example, let me just check, and I'm pretty sure these dimensions are okay. This distance between the bottom of the nose and the chin, is it, well, it goes up to the eyebrows. No, it's it's not quite the same. Let me just take the, di the uh, distance of the nose. That's a bit... Uh, it's not right. Dunk. That's right. Okay. So those dimensions are okay. Incidentally, this looks like a lot of hair. It doesn't look quite right, but every photo I've seen of Leonard Kentish, that's what his hair looks like. It is, uh, it sits up high above his forehead. So, uh, as I uh, mix some uh, raw umber green to put in this shading, I have to pay attention to those axes that are, in this instance, quite wrong. Other dimensions are okay. Those dimensions, the distances between the eyes, they're okay, but the axes are not.
Now one of the reasons that the tracing can lead us astray is that the the line that we do with our biro, with our ballpoint pen, is very thin. But in fact what we are dealing with is shadows, not lines. And so our thin line only picks up just a hint of where <laughs> the shadows are going and not, not the full show. And if it gets the wrong, you know, a, a part of it that is not true to the alignment of the uh, of the face, that's where we run into trouble. And that's why understanding how the face really operates in iconography is so important, so that that mouth there, that axis, is quite wrong. Even the, And I can see what the issue is. It's because if I take that line in the proper axis, but his bottom lip actually is quite fat on that side, and so it, it rises. But now that fixes the axis and actually looks much more like the model that I'm working from. And that is starting to look much more like the model. Leonard Noel Kentish was born in Richmond, Victoria in August 1907. When he was three years old, the family moved to Queensland in the Ipswich Methodist churches, Len became a local preacher, leader and Sunday school teacher. While working as a state public servant in Brisbane, he began accountancy studies and volunteered for home mission service. After serving as home missionary at Mitchell, Len moved to Woodford as a candidate for ordination. And there, in 1928, he met Violet Simpson. After ordination in 1934, he and Vi married in Maryborough and transferred to the Townsville circuit. In 1935, he was invited to fill an overseas missions uh, ministerial vacancy in Darwin, the most cosmopolitan town in Australia, its population including many indigenous people. In 1939, his interest in Aboriginal work accelerated with his transfer to the Goulburn Island Mission as district chairman. There he gained rapport with the indigenous people and began translating the New Testament into their language. He volunteered as a coast watcher in regular radio contact with the long-range transmitter HMAS Coonawarra. Under imminent threat of invasion following the bombing of Darwin, Len planned the evacuation of the wives and children of his staff on five isolated stations in March 1942. In April he led to safety about 100 children now numbered among the stolen generation. As chairman, Ken Len Kentish planned to visit his remaining staff on their stations in 1943. When fuel rationing grounded the mission catch, the Navy maintained the transport of stores and personnel. Lem embarked at Goulburn on HMAS Patricia Cam. He visited Mullingimby and Elko Island and was on the way to Uakala when the ship was bombed by a Japanese float plane, sinking it almost immediately. After a second bomb was dropped among the survivors in the water, they were machine gunned for 30 minutes. The float plane landed and captured Len at gunpoint. Those who made it to shore and survived were rescued and taken to Darwin. After the war it was learned that Len was imprisoned at Dodo in Uru Islands where he suffered beatings and starvation in a futile attempt to elicit information. 
when Allied aircraft targeted Tobo heavily for several consecutive days in an act of frustration and possibly revenge. On the 5th of February, three Japanese officers took him to the edge of a bomb crater and beheaded him. After the war, Vi learned of his fate by her persistent appeals through the press. Australian war graves and war crimes teams investigated and located his grave. The Australian government recognised Vi as a war widow. Len was but one of many civilian victims of the inhumane brutality of war, unique as the only Australian captured by enemy forces in Australia during World War II.